Hey everyone, most of us are aware, excited, and or curious about Cloak & Dagger's live action series premiering this week on Freeform. Will it be good or will it fall short? Regardless, a comic book character or character is getting a TV series means it's time to talk about their history. But first, we want to show some love to our awesome sister show, Film Riot, because this week Ryan Conley and the rest of the Film Riot team launched their brand new weekly podcast in which Ryan will have an hour-long conversation with filmmakers from all over Hollywood. From actors, directors, and writers, to cinematographers, stunt coordinators, and VFX artists. Each episode will focus on the creative process and challenges that go into making our favorite movies. And we're we're talking about blockbuster movies like Star Wars, John Wick, 10 Cloverfield Lane, War of the Planet of the Apes, and the list goes on. In fact, the very first episode features David Sandberg, the director of Shazam, so that's a must listen for all you DCEU fans. We know that many members of the Variant Nation are already familiar with Film Riot, but honestly, if you're into filmmaking at any level or you just love movies like we do, you definitely want to check them out. You'll find links for the new Film Riot podcast and the Film Riot channel in the description. Now with that covered, Cloak & Dagger's comic book history is pretty interesting, even though it isn't very deep or complex. So let's take a look, shall we? Cloak & Dagger first appeared in Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man issue 64 in March of 1982. They were created by Bill Mantlo and Ed Hannigan. Writer Bill Mantlo came up with the original concept of Cloak & Dagger after a visit to Ellis Island. He was quoted saying, in Marvel Age of Issue 6, They came in the night when all was silent, and my mind was blank. They came completely conceived as to their powers and attributes, their origin and motivation. They embodied between them all the fear and misery, hunger and longing that had haunted me on Ellis Island. It was at this point co-creator and artist Ed Hannigan started hashing out character design ideas with Mantlo. But let's check out their comic book origin. We get their complete origins in issue 4 of their first solo series. So let's start with Dagger aka Tandy Bowen because ladies first after all. Tandy is the daughter of a rich supermodel who could care less about her daughter as she's way too wrapped up with her social life and career. Since her mom couldn't care less about her, you might be thinking well at least she has her dad. Nope, her dad abandoned her and her mother when Tandy was very young. Tandy's boyfriend Rob even forgot all about her when he went to college. So saying she had abandonment issues is an understatement. Being alone, she decided to head to New York and pursue her dream of becoming a dancer. Now that's Dagger's backstory, but now let's check out Cloaks, aka Tyrone Johnson's, then see how they met and got their powers. Tyrone had a very different life, but still not great. Unlike Tandy who came from wealth, Tyrone was from the ghetto in South Boston. He also had a speech impediment or stuttering problem. Said speech problem would come to haunt him when he and his friend Billy were just walking down the street and some thug shot a man right in front of them. Terrified by the dead body laying in front of them, Billy took off running. A cop saw this and pulled his gun on him thinking he was the perp. But Tyrone couldn't get the words, Billy didn't do it out in time to the cop due to his stuttering problem, which led to the cop shooting and killing his friend. Devastated that he couldn't help his friend, he too also ran away to New York without a penny to his name. Being forced to steal in order to eat is how Tandy and Tyrone would meet. You see, even though Tyrone didn't want to, he thought about stealing Tandy's purse, thinking she looked like she had more than enough. But he was beaten to the punch when a thief stole her purse right in front of him. Ty decided to take down the thief and return the purse back to Tandy. She was extremely grateful and bought Ty a burger as well as gave him some cash for a hotel. The two hit it off and when they left the restaurant, they were tricked by a chemist named Simon Marshall who lured them and other homeless people to his lab with promises of food and shelter. Instead of giving shelter and food, he used them as test subjects for his new drug, D-Light, which had previously killed everyone injected with it. Marshall then injected the two of them with said drug, which was a heroin-like substitute. And unlike past subjects, they survived. And as a side effect, they were granted superpowers. The two were then able to escape and use their newfound powers to become the superhero duo of Cloak and Dagger. I'll get to what their powers and abilities are shortly, but first, let's talk about story arcs and publication history. Cloak and Dagger's first story was in Peter Parker the Spectacular Spider-Man issue 64 as that was their first appearance. It's in this book we're introduced to the duo as vigilantes who are hunting down Simon Marshall, the man responsible for their powers, along with his drug dealing henchmen. They find Marshall and his men and end up throwing him out of a five story building. Spider-Man shocked by this says, we're five stories up, there's no way anyone could have survived a fall from that height. To which Cloak says, they sought the light, I let them find it. What you call justice has been done, Spider-Man, yet no one likes to tell the tale. And Dagger says, except you. Spider-Man then replies, so what happens now? Cloak finally replies, nothing. 
our work is over for now. Basically, we learned that Cloak & Dagger's mission is to stop all who deal drugs to endanger the young and helpless. This is even stated when they appear again in Peter Parker the Spectacular Spider-Man issue 69. In this issue, they're after the crime lord Silvermane. Literally anyone who deals illegal drugs to others isn't off limits to them. So much so, they end up killing a bedridden Silvermane in the last page of the issue. Now this is comics, so no one really ever stays dead unless you're a parent or a loving uncle. Anyway, Silvermane comes back in the next issue, issue 70, in a new robot form, but of course is defeated by Spider-Man and Cloak and & Dagger by the end of the issue. Then in issue 81 and 82 of the same series, Cloak & Dagger appear yet again, but this time to stop Punisher from killing junkies, as Cloak & Dagger want to help them and cure them, while the Punisher believes they should be punished for breaking the law. Long story short, we find out that the Punisher was using Cloak & Dagger's powers to get through Kingpin's defenses, so he could kill him. Cloak & Dagger want to kill Kingpin as well, but are unable to after Kingpin got away due to the Punisher failing in his attempt to kill Kingpin, allowing him to get away. After appearing in several Spider-Man issues, the duo became popular amongst readers and were given their own four-issue miniseries in October of 1983. The miniseries would flesh out the characters way more, like showing them moving to a church finding shelter and food where Priest Father Delgado resided. Issue 4 of the series would give us their origin that I just told you guys. Essentially, this series dealt with their role in the city and stopping crime. They were questioning whether they were out for vengeance or justice, and what lines they should or shouldn't cross morally. It's incredibly interesting to see the internal conflict of if and how they're approaching stopping crime is right or wrong. And obviously, as their power set shows, Cloak is more drawn to the dark as Dagger is more drawn to the light. Seeing them struggle with that and having to work together is awesome. The success of this title lets them getting an ongoing bi-monthly title in 1985. The series focused on police corruption and Cloak and & Dagger's quest to end the drug trade completely, as well as exploring the issue of vigilanteism. Asking the question, is it right? or wrong. I also should mention that Despair was eventually revealed to be the creator of the addictive drug called Dark Light or D-Light, thus being the true person responsible for Cloak and Dagger's creation, but he was apparently consumed by the dark form. Skipping some stuff here and there, we have the Dark Reign slash Dark X-Men Utopia storyline. In Dark X-Men issue 2, Cloak and Dagger were approached by Norman Osborn in his Iron Patriot getup to join a team of X-Men he was creating. But Dagger's like, we're not mutants, Osborn. But he's basically like, yeah, the public doesn't know that. You have powers and you're scary. Of course you're mutants. They accepted and became part of Osborn's personal team of X-Men. They would be joined by veterans like Emma Frost, Namor, and Angel. Cloak and Dagger worked very well with the rest of the team and they helped keep the peace in San Francisco. But siding with Osborn just didn't sit well with Dagger and she wanted to ditch the team. But Cloak stopped her saying that they can't keep running away from everything forever. So they stuck around, despite witnessing some of the more disagreeable practices of Osborn's team. But sticking it out turned out to be for the best because when Emma Frost and Namor betrayed Osborn, as it was revealed they were working with the Hammer Director as part of a ploy by Cyclops, both Cloak and Dagger were invited to join the real X-Men. Tandy and Ty accepted this more readily than they accepted Osborn's entreaties, and thus the two runaways were finally part of a team. But of course, that didn't last forever, and they eventually went off on their own once again. Then during the Spider Island story, we found out that Cloak and Dagger were captured by Mr. Negative, and by using his negative powers, turned them into his henchmen. While under his influence, Cloak and Dagger were tasked with bringing down Spider-Man. In the end, Spider-Man managed to break Mr. Negative's influence, and Cloak and Dagger helped Spider-Man in defeating Mr. Negative. But I'm gonna leave it at that and start talking about powers and abilities. Let's start with Cloak. He can manipulate Dark Force energy and access the dimension from which it originates. What is Dark Force energy, you ask? It's basically dark matter, either in gas, liquid, or solid form. Its cold, draining, and prolonged exposure can cause someone to go insane, turn them evil, and even kill. But because Cloak is able to manipulate the Dark Force, he can hide in shadows, become intangible, pull people into the Dark Force dimension by opening a portal within his cloak, or teleport himself and others by opening a portal into, then out of, the Dark Force dimension. Essentially, like an interdimensional shortcut. And let's not forget he can create a localized field of impenetrable darkness and create solid tendrils of darkness. He's so powerful he once managed to temporarily trap Thanos in his cloak. The downside to his power is that Cloak feels a constant hunger for light, which must be fed by a semi-mystical light energy akin to the light of a soul. Well, Dagger is one of the only possible sources of this energy, so she has to regularly feed Cloak with her light bolts. Speaking of Dagger, she has the ability to create psionic light daggers that she can throw wherever she wills them. Her daggers also drain living beings of their life force when struck 
so they're no joke. Her light daggers can also cure certain people of drug addictions, as well as alleviate Cloak's hunger for the light, as I just mentioned which is one of the many reasons they make such a good team. The downside to her powers is that as she goes more than a week or so without using them, she will become fevered and delirious, and eventually discharge her energy involuntarily. But now let's talk some reading recommendations. Read Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man issue 64, Cloak and Dagger Shadows of Light, Cloak and Dagger Runaways and Reversals, Cloak and Dagger Lost and Found, and Spider-Man Island Cloak and Dagger. That should be enough to get you guys started. First up for Wednesday, June 6th, we have The Man of Steel issue 2. With an arsonist loose in Metropolis, Superman's powers are almost useless in finding the culprit. And back at the Daily Planet, everyone wants to know what's going on with Lois Lane. Next we have Cloak and Dagger issue 1. This new six issue miniseries will focus on Tyrone Johnson and Tandy Bowen as a new crusade takes them across the globe, fighting alongside Spider-Man, the X-Men, and even the Avengers to battle a dangerous threat from their past that will force Cloak and Dagger to reunite. Here we have Doctor Strange issue 1. The Eye of Agamotto is closed, Doctor Stephen Strange has lost his connection to the Earth's arcane power, and he can't wait to recover while nightmares press against the seams of our reality. Next we have Ant-Man and Wasp issue 1. With their brand new movie coming out soon, this is the perfect time to jump on an Ant-Man and Wasp book. And finally we have Batman issue 48. Batman and Catwoman decide it might be better to elope rather than go through some big wedding ceremony. But no sooner do they put their marriage on the fast track than the Joker appears. And that's going to bring another episode of Variant to a close. But remember, we put the link for Film Rat's new podcast in the description below. So be sure to check that out. Also, links for our Instagram, our Twitter, our Facebook, and our website are also down there in the description. And if you like the channel, be sure to subscribe and then hit the bell next to it so you're notified whenever we upload a new video. But I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.